Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Poultry Press Online Classroom. This is uh, Rick, and I will be your instructor for today. Today, I want to talk about how to set environment variables. Environment variables are important uh, for the operation of your system uh, for many different reasons, uh, mainly because they allow you to tell the computer where to find stuff uh, on your hard drive. Uh, another good reason for the use of operating system variables is to pass parameters uh, to your programs when they execute. Uh, they also allow you to provide shortcut uh, shortcuts. You know, when you're changing directories, you can store path information in an environment variable, and you can reference it from the command line if you wanted to. Uh, you can use environment variables in batch files as well. So they have lots of different uh, uses. Uh, mainly, the use of the environment variable that I'm going to show you is how to find an executable file on your computer. The reason we want to do this is uh, when we're programming C Sharp uh, in a bare bones configuration, all we need is the command uh, line compiler tool, which is the csc.exe file, and a text editor. We use a text editor to create our source files, and we uh, compile those files from the command line using the csc executable file. So if I didn't have the environment variable set, I would type in CSC, hit return, and you can see I get an error because the system can't find this executable file. So how do I create an environment variable that tells the computer to go look in a certain directory to find this CSC executable? And that's what I'm going to show you today. The lesson comes uh, from Chapter 2 of my book, C Sharp for Artists. The section on environment variables starts on page 22. In this chapter, I show you how to set the environment variables for Windows XP. In this video, I want to show you how to set environment variables in Windows 7. They're very similar. The difference between setting an environment variable in Windows 7 and Windows XP is how you get to the system properties box. Okay. In Windows 7, that's a little, uh, just a little extra step that you have to take. But once you get to the system properties, the uh, setting the environment variables are practically the same, same way. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, first, let's find the CSC executable file. Um, when you install the .NET framework, um, it installs it, installs it in the Windows directory. So we go to C slash Windows, and we scroll down the Windows directory looking for Microsoft.net. And we find it right there. There's a Microsoft.net folder. We double click it, and then we go to the framework folder. And on this machine, I've got 4.0 framework installed, so I'm going to double click it. And I'm going to scroll down until I find csc.exe, and it's right here. Okay, There's my executable file. Now I've got my path, so all I have to do is just select the address bar up here, and I'm going to copy it. Okay, So I copy that path, and now I'm going to use that path to set an environment variable, so I can close that window. So to set an environment variable, I go to my Start uh, button, then I'm going to right click on the computer, and I'm going to click on Properties from the pop-up window. When the pop Properties window comes up, I'm going to click on Advanced System Settings. Now you have to be an administrator to do this. And then down here in my System Properties window, I'm going to go down to the bottom, and I'm going to see the Environment Variables button. Click on it. Now I have two kinds of environment variables. I have uh, a box up at the top and a box down here at the bottom. The box up at the top is for the user that's logged into the machine. Right now I'm logged into the machine as the administrator. Okay, So the administrator can change not only his environment variables but the system environment variables as well. The difference between the two is these environment variables apply to no matter who logs in. So if there are multiple accounts on this machine, everybody who logs in, they would, have, they would be able to use these environment variables. Each individual user can set his own environment variables. So usually, you don't mess with the system environment variables. You you uh, you add new ones or modify these up here. Okay. 
So the first one, I'm going to add a new one. So to add a new environment variable, I'm going to click New, and I'm going to call it .NET Home. And the way I do mine is I'd say, I separate each word with an underscore, so .NET underscore Home. And then I'm going to just paste the path of that uh, folder where I found my csc.exe file into the variable name. So the variable name is .NET Home. The variable value box is where I paste the path in. Hit OK. Now I've got a new environment variable. How do I use that? Well, I need to set my path now. So I click on my path environment variable. Now the path environment variable tells the computer where to go look for executables. Here is an environment variable and the value of this .NET home variable is the value of the path to the CSC executable. But this, the operating system doesn't know to go check that until I put this variable into the path. And then, then it'll say, oh, okay, I have to check in that, ver in that, in that location. So I'm going to edit, um, I'm going to edit the path environment variable. I'm going to add the .NET home environment variable to my path. The way I do that is I just use uh, percent. Notice that I've separated the first environment variable, which is for end unit home, with a semicolon, and then I use a percent, and then the name of the environment variable, dot net home, and then percent like that. Hit OK. Once you set that environment variable, you make sure you hit OK, and then OK. And then I can dismiss my uh, properties. Now, if you had the environment, the uh, command window open, you want to shut it and open it up again, then your environment variables will take effect. So the way that you test it is you can go just type CSC, and you'll s and it executed, but you know gave me an error because I didn't provide a source file for input. Clear the screen. Now another way to test is you use it uh, in a command. So let's say if I wanted to change directory to the .NET Home. So if I said CD space percent dot .NET Home percent and it hit return, notice how it now I'm in that new directory. I'm in the .NET Framework directory. So that's how we set an environment variable in Windows 7. So to review, uh, there's two types of environment variables. The wait well, let's start here. To get to the environment variable section, uh, you click on start, click on computer. Oh, let's do that again. You click on start, right click on my computer, or right click on computer. Click on the properties when it pops up on the pop-up window. And then in the left-hand corner of the computer properties, you want to click on advanced system settings. And then down in the system properties window, click on environment variables. And then here you can edit, uh, create a new one, edit an existing environment variable, or delete. So there, what you can use new to create a new environment variable. And once you create that environment variable, if it's a path, you can include that environment variable into the path. The path itself is an environment variable that I created, okay? And this path here is added to this path down here. So this is the system path. You really don't want to mess around with that, okay? And unless you really know what you're doing. But if you want to just add to this path, then you create a new path environment variable. And the, the purpose of the path environment variable is to tell the computer where to go look for executable files, okay? That's it for setting environment variables. Again, this lesson comes from chapter 22 or chapter two in my uh, in my book C sharp for artists. And if you have any questions, you can always email me at uh, Rick at PulpFreePress.com.